I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on organic mechanisms. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman and Dat Destroyer books. I'm going to go over a mechanism with you for the DAT exam. All I care about you understanding is the way the arrows are moving. And after I move an arrow, understanding what that arrow movement, which is the movement of the electrons, what that is doing. So come around and let's have a look. All I care about you is understanding what I'm doing. We're going to take a compound called cyclohexene oxide, and we're going to treat it with BF3, dimethyl sulfoxide, and water. And we're going to end up getting a compound called 2-hydroxy cyclohexanoin. Now, I'm hoping you all remember BF3 is a Lewis acid. It's a Lewis acid, and in this case, it's going to act as a big fat proton. So normally you're used to seeing you protonate something with an H plus. Think of BF3 as just a big fat hydrogen plus ion. So as you can see, this will act as a Lewis base and this is the Lewis acid and you simply protonate it. All right, once I protonated it, the trick that I like to use is when you have DMSO, which is this compound, if you draw the resonance form of this, so in actuality, there's two dots up here that sometimes we don't put in. And as you can see, what's going to happen is I'm going to move these electrons out. And that would give this as a resonance form. I think it's easier to see it if you use this resonance form. The O- minus is going to now launch a nucleophilic attack, and it's going to open up the epoxide. Notice the way the arrows are moving. I attack and move out. That gives this species right here. Let me just make this a little cleaner. This is a three. Now, what I then do is I'm going to do an elimination. The water is going to come in. It takes off the H. This moves in to form the carbonyl, and this moves out. I hope you can see that those movements all resulted in the formation of the ketone group. So one more time, the water pulled off the H. And notice the arrow movement. These electrons are moving away, breaking the CH bond, forming the CO bond. And then this moves out to form my byproduct, dimethyl sulfide. That would be dimethyl sulfide. And then my final step is the bond between the O and the B is broken. The arrow moves out. from the, We have water, if you remember, captured in H, and that's how we got H3O. We capture an H, we protonate it, and that would release the boron trifluoride, regenerate it, and we're left with the OH, and this is the same as this, and we get the product 2-hydroxycyclohexanoin. I hope this gives you an understanding of the way we can move arrows and show what's called a mechanism. For the DAT exam, there are questions where you're going to be required to understand what an arrow movement does. All right, I hope this helps. And I'll see you in study group on Facebook. Bye-bye.